Hello, I'm glad that you could join me today for this 30-minute session. It's always a pleasure to be able to come before you and encourage you and just be your motivator, letting you know that you can do the things that God desires for you to do. Those things that you desire on the inside of you, those are things that God has placed in you to get accomplished. Whether it seems like it's just a big mountain before you, it's okay. It's okay. You can still get it done. Because he takes us a step at a time. He takes us slowly. He takes us slowly. He might have called you to be a missionary. He takes it a little bit at a time. He doesn't just take you, you you say one day and then next thing you know you're a missionary. He doesn't he doesn't do us like that. He makes sure that we are ready. He don't want you getting out there um telling people things that he didn't say. He takes us a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. You know, so many times God has called people to be pastors. And they jump up. They leave the church. The church that they have been going to. They, they, they leave it. And they just think that it's time. Because it was confirmed. Just because something was confirmed doesn't mean just do it right then. It doesn't mean that. It means take your time. Just let God lead you. And he'll lead you just a step, a step, a step. It's not for us to just jump right into it. When you go to the beach, you don't just, well, I know I don't do this. Just, just run and just jump right into the water because it's cold. And I don't want to freeze. So I just take my time a little bit at a time and um, get in the water. Because the water is cold to me when I first get in. My body has to get adjusted to it. So that's how God does us. It takes us a little bit at a time to get accomplished. Those things that's deep within us. Because we have things that's deep within us. Sometimes we have things that's in us that we would like to get accomplished. But we um, don't realize that they're there. Things that we like. That we don't realize that we like. We don't realize that we like it. Until um, God starts taking us those steps. And then that's when we're like. Oh my goodness, I like this, you know. But it takes God to do that. It takes him to do that. It takes him to to unveil it just a little bit at a time. And he's faithful. He's faithful to do that to him. All we have to do is relax in him. Just relax. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. You know, we always hear that statement about how life is just too short. Life goes so fast. I mean, year after year, it seems like it just goes faster and faster. <laughs> All we have to do is just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. I love it when somebody else is driving me. And I'm able to enjoy the scenery. I'm able to enjoy it. I can look at this. I can look at that. You know. It's just a relaxing time. I know now sometimes. I will put on the brakes on the passenger side. I, I do do that. I think everybody has the habit of doing that. But I have to get in the habit of. Um, not paying attention. To some people driving. <laughs> and just trust. 
trust in God, not in that person, not in that person's capability or drive, but just trust God that we're going to get to our destination safely. But that's what we do. We let God just have the driver's seat and just let him just just take us on because he's going to cruise us right on, cruise us right on through life as we just just not put on brakes as he's trying to drive us forward. And he just, we just putting putting on the brakes, putting on the brakes. And um, he's like, I have this. Because I'm sure that that person that's driving, they're thinking to themselves, they got this. You know, in the backseat driving. Wait, did you see that car? Really? I want to wait a minute. I like to turn red. I don't do like that, but I do put on brakes. I won't say anything. But see, God is in. To- let if we let Him be in total control, we can enjoy our life. We can enjoy it. We can have a good time wherever we are. And next thing we know, that He has gotten rid of all the that religious stuff that we've been holding on to. Because you know, Christians can't do this. Christians can't do that. A Christians can't do that. We've heard that all of our life. And it's so much to break through. It's so many things to break through. God just wants us to have fun. He wants us to enjoy our life. He wants us to. And then, you know, if you think back at the um, parties that Jesus went to. They call him a wine bibber. He socializes with um, the sinners. I mean, they really talked about him badly. And it makes me wonder, what was he doing at the parties? Was he going around mingling with people? Did he have wine in his in his hand as he mingled with different people? What was he doing? Apparently, he had to be doing something. He wasn't just sitting there judging people. Like, look at those sinners. <laughs> when nobody would have came to him if he would have done that. If he would have sat back and just just ate his food and just looked at the different people and just sit there, people wouldn't have been drawn to him. They wouldn't have been drawn to him like that. Children were even drawn to him. You know, children are not going to trust you if their parents don't. If their parents, if a child's parent um, doesn't trust that person, that child is going to be drawn to that person. They have to see the parent interact with the person that they're going to stay with. That makes a big difference. But children were even drawn to Jesus. So Jesus had to have act like them. He had to have act like them. I'm not saying like doing sinful things, but he had to act like them, like, you know, sitting there, eating with them, communicating with different people, um, just being friendly and not having a stuck up attitude. Like, those sinners, I'm so glad that I'm not a sinner like that. Hmm. Drinking wine, what? Me drink wine? Oh, you have got to be kidding. You know? They never said that Jesus carried around, around a bottle of wine with him even where he went. Or those flat things that they had. Um, the cowboy used the canteens or whatever. You know, whatever they used back then. Um, never said that he carried one of those around full of wine. But when he went to a party, apparently, that's what he did. It never said in, in the Bible that Jesus was drunk. So I'm sure that he probably just had the wine and probably sipped it every once in a while or something. 
But um, as far as them saying that Jesus was drunk in the Bible, he was, you know, trying to hit on this woman or whatever, he conducted himself as as one of them. But then he con he conducted himself as the Son of God. So we can um, have fun as a Christian. We can have fun as a Christian. Because what God is going to do is he has to cut through all of that religious mess. He has to cut through all of that religious mess. All of that religious mess. Because people have been viewing us the wrong way. They view us the wrong way. Because we view ourselves the wrong way. So we just have to relax and let God lead our life. Let Him lead it. Let Him lead our life. You know, we get so afraid of sin. We're so afraid of sin, so afraid. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Just pray and see if it's okay for you to be able to go to that party or if it's okay to go see that movie or whatever the case may be. Just see if it's okay and stop putting limits on yourself and God doesn't place some limits on you. Let's see what our Bible scripture says for today. This is Romans, the first chapter, and it is verse 20. And we are in the easy translation. And I have the new version app on my phone, and I have a Bible verse um, every day. This, this Bible verse says, Ever since God made the world, he has been showing people clearly about himself. We cannot see God, but the things that he has made show as clearly what he is like. We can understand his great power that continues forever. We can know that he is the true God. So there is no reason for anyone to say we could not know about God. Um, I'm going to read the uh, verse before it. This is talking about people are guilty. And it's, I'm starting at verse, I'm, I'm still in Romans first chapter, verse 18. People in heaven, I mean, sorry, God in heaven shows that he is angry with people. He is angry because they do not respect him and they do bad things. Because they continue to do those bad things, they choose not to accept God's true message. They would under they should understand what God is like because God himself has shown it to them clearly. That's when we go to verse 20. Ever since God made the world, he has been showing people clearly about himself. We cannot see God, but the things that he has made shown us clearly what he is like. We can understand his great power that continues forever. We can know that he is the true God. So there is no reason for anyone to say we could not know about God. This is verse 21. Those people really, I mean, those people really knew about God, but they did not respect him as a great God. And they did not thank him. They did not even think clearly anymore. Their minds became confused and they did not understand God's message. 
They said that they were wise, but really, they became fools. They refused to worship the great God who can never die. Instead, they made false gods for themselves. And then that's how they, when they started talking about um, how they worshipped um, idols. Okay, yeah, they were saying how they worship idols and um, um, make made from people who must die and and having idols made out of birds and animals and snakes and all that and how they worship that. Um, but we know that um, God is seen. God is seen everywhere, and there is no reason why we can't we can't say that um, God exists, and we can't say that we don't know God because He's everywhere. Everywhere that we look, that if we truly wanted to see Him, we could see Him. Babies being born, I've heard many cases. Um, about a baby even having the, the sheet over their face um, when they are born and how they could have suffocated and the doctor just so happened to notice and, and pull that off the baby's face. Or I've heard about the um, ambiblical cord being around the baby's neck and again the doctor just so happened to see it and start snipping the thing off its off the baby's neck or it would have choked them. Um, babies who couldn't breathe when they first come out the womb, I mean, and just thing after thing. You know, but see, we like to count things as being a coincidence. And um, it's not. It's not. You're not getting hit by that tractor trailer. It's not a coincidence. God saved your life. He spared your life. He spared your life. The times that you were in a car accident and your car flipping over, I mean, he spared your life. And we, uh, we like to say it's a coincidence. And then we like to not give God any glory from it. You know, we'll forget it or, you know, it's like, um, we're like, oh, yeah, you know, because uh, you will hear other people say, yeah, God saved your life. And we'll agree. And then we just don't even take it any further. We don't take it any further. We're like, okay, God saved my life. Okay. And, <laughs> you know, it's like. It's like uh, we really do act like he doesn't exist when he does. You know, I was thinking about how he made us so different. He made us so different. We are so different. Our looks are different. We are very different. He didn't make everybody tall and slim. He didn't. People are different. They're different. He made different flowers. Different flowers. Um, beaches. Beaches are different. The sand, the water. So different. There are different places in this world. It's just different. Every everything is not the same. Trees only can survive in certain areas. Plants, the same thing. He made us all different for a reason. For a reason. I have even heard some people say that their doctor said that a certain climate was even better for them. That's why it's good to ask God, what would he have us to do? Where would he have us to live? What would he have us to name our child? We have to include him. We have to include him because he's almighty God. He knows all the answers. He knows all the answers. 
And we have to think. When you think about naming a child, do you want your child to be called demon for the rest of their life? We have to be just really just knowing that God is right there. He's right there. Because he's right there because remember when Jesus left, he said that he was leaving the Holy Spirit here to help us. We have all kinds of help. All kinds of help. So we need to call on the heavenly realm to help us. And not just do things just because we think at that moment it's the right thing to do. But see, as you are led by the Spirit and you continually let Him lead you, you're building up a practice. So you ask God different things. What's the best car for me? The best neighborhood for me? Because we have to understand that our life isn't just about us. Our life is truly not just about us. It's not. Our life is about other people too. Our life covers other people. So we have to know that that uh, when we live our life, that others are watching us. Especially if you say you're a Christian. People are watching. They're watching to see how you're going to handle certain situations. Not that we get it all right, because we don't. We don't get everything all right. We just don't. We're going to make mistakes because we're human. But we need to include God in certain things. The best job for us. We can get a job sometimes and then it'll pull us away from church. And that's not okay. That's not okay. You're doing a, you're doing a um, service at church and they need you there. And of course, yes, you do need a job. You need to make more money. But what is God saying about that? You have to know what he's saying. You can't just jump up and just take a job just because it pays more and the benefits are good. Because it can be a setup from the enemy. So what you want to do is pray. If you don't feel that God is saying go that way, then don't go that way. Because you will regret it. And you will wind up with nothing. So we want to listen to God. We want to listen to God. We want to hear what he has to say. I mean, that's something that we want to do. So we want to be open so that he can speak to us. So we have to ask some questions. We have to ask some questions. What shall I name my child? What is the best car for me to get right now? What's the best job, the, the, the best place for me to live right now? What church would you have me to go to? Is this the right person that you would have me to marry? We have to be open to God. We can't close them out. We cannot close God out and want to do it right. We can't. God wants us to include him. He wants us to include him. You know, sometimes um, things can happen and you'll find yourself not even knowing the answer, but doing the answer. Because it's something that you practice. We have to practice listening. 
being in his presence. That's a practice that we have to have. It's a practice. It takes time. He knows it takes time. We can't be afraid to make mistakes. Because we're going to make mistakes. So just practice listening. Remembering that he's there. Because that's all you have to do is remember that he's there. Once you remember that he's there, he can lead you. He can lead you. Because he wants to. That's what he wants to do. He wants to be able to lead you so you won't fall into those those traps that the enemy has set. And you can see them clearly. Those traps will become clearer to you. And I say it every time. And we serve an awesome God. He wants to see us succeed. You know, there are people, you know, you would think that everyone wants their children to succeed, but that's not true. Some people don't want their child to do better than them. Some people just don't. But God wants us to be our best. He wants us to be our best. (coughs) Excuse me. He wants us to be our best. And a good parent does. They want their children to do their best. Even if that means being better than they are. Because you want to see your child succeed. You want to see them with nice things. And that's how God is with us. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to have the finest things in life. Not just when we get to heaven, but right now. Right now. He wants us to have the finest things in life. God loves you so, so very much. He really does. And he can and he will take care of you. Just allow him to. It's coming up on the end of our 30 minutes. And I hope that you have enjoyed it. That you have learned something. That something has been confirmed in your life. I'm going to do the salvations prayer. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart before, now is the time. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. It's like, what are you waiting for? There's nothing to wait for. You don't have to get yourself right. God will help you do that. Just repeat after me and mean it from your heart. Jesus, come into my heart. I want you as my Lord and my Savior. I know that you came, you died, and you was resurrected all for me. I repent for the sins that I've done. I want to live my life for you. I want to live in heaven with you and with the Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So now that you have done that and meant it from your heart, you are saved. You are saved. Yes. And I am very proud of you. You've made the best and most important decision that you could ever make in your life. Now you can communicate with the Father. He can communicate with you. So tell others that you are a Christian now. Let them know that you're saved. That you're living your life for God. And also pray with someone to become saved. It's very important. You don't want to see them go to hell. I love you much, and I thank you again for watching, and I pray for you and your family every day. You make it a good one. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.